Hello there, Homeschool Nolan here, here to help you navigate learning in the digital age. Earlier this month, the New York Times broke a story that NYU, or New York University, had fired a longtime chemistry professor because students had complained that his organic chemistry class was too hard. And today, I'd like to talk about why college should be hard and what the firing of this award-winning professor says about the state of colleges today. Now, I initially didn't take much interest in this story until I realized that this professor, Maitland Jones, is the same professor who taught organic chemistry at Princeton back when I was there. And no, I didn't take organic chemistry or orgo as it was affectionately known, but just about everyone knew about this class and how hard it was. So I was quite surprised that such an esteemed professor who had been teaching this subject for decades would get fired. I wondered, was he really that bad? Or had he simply lost a step or two over the years as he got older? To help me find out, I talked to one of my classmates who did take Professor Jones's organic chemistry class. To my surprise, he said that while the course was indeed very hard, Professor Jones was also a very good teacher and he had won multiple teaching awards. I asked him if he thought if it was possible that maybe he had simply lost a step with age, but he didn't think that was likely. So that got me thinking, what makes a class hard if the teacher is good? Isn't the definition of a good teacher someone who can teach you and help you actually learn the subject? I then thought back to my own experience at Princeton. Again, I didn't take organic chemistry, but I did take an advanced chemistry class my freshman year, which I found to be quite challenging. I remember being humbled when I scored only a 21 out of 100 on my first exam. Now, even though I had a hard time in the class, it never once occurred to me that maybe I could blame the professor or his teaching assistants for not being able to help me grasp molecular spectroscopy. On the contrary, I appreciated that one of the TAs in the class actually went out of his way to tutor me over the Thanksgiving break. The reason it never occurred to me to blame the professor or anyone else was because I noticed that there were other students who did much better than me. I understood that the professor had made the course easier so that guys like me could get an A, then there'd be no way to separate me from the other students who were more talented than me and it'd also be unfair to them. But back to the chemistry professor who was fired. I think another Princeton alum who took his class back in the 80s said it best when he was quoted in the student newspaper, the Daily Princetonian, saying, I'm sure there are a lot of us back in the fall of 1984 that would have signed such a petition, that is to remove him. But if we had succeeded in getting the difficulty level of the class watered down, eventually would have, we would have been disappointed with the results. I think it's better to stick with a challenge. Now, NYU is just one school, and Professor Jones is just one man. But one of the reasons I think this story got so much attention is, is that NYU is a respected national university. And it also tells us a couple things about colleges today and how they have changed since the days when I was in school. First, colleges, at least until now, are supposed to be gateways to challenging fields. My classmate, who is a medical doctor today, put it best when he asked, would you want a doctor who couldn't pass organic chemistry? The fact is, organic chemistry is inherently a difficult subject, like quantum physics or differential equations. And just as the greatest basketball coach in the world isn't going to make me into a basketball star, the greatest teacher in the world isn't going to make an average student an expert in theoretical physics. What difficult college courses like organic chemistry should do is separate those who are merely have an interest in the subject from those with real talent and aptitude so they can excel in the field. Because of this, sometimes even really smart, talented people can get discouraged from continuing in a difficult field. An example of one such person is Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon.com, 
who was also a student at Princeton. In the book, Invent and Wander, The Collected Writings of Jeff Bezos, he has a chapter titled, A Crucial Moment at Princeton. In this chapter, he writes how he started as a physics major at Princeton during, and during his junior year, he was taking a course in quantum mechanics. One day, he and his roommate came across a very difficult partial differential equation problem that you, they just couldn't solve until they showed it to another student named Yosanta, whom he called the smartest guy at Princeton. Yosanta took one look at the problem and solved it. And this is what Jeff Bezos wrote about it. That was an important moment for me because it was the very moment when I realized I was never going to be a great theoretical physicist. So I started doing some soul searching. In most occupations, if you're in the 90th percentile or above, you're going to contribute. In theoretical physics, you got to be like one of the top 50 people in the world or you're really just not helping out much. It was very clear. I saw the writing on the wall and changed my major quickly to electrical engineering and computer science. Now, I'm sure if Jeff stuck it out, he still could have graduated from Princeton as a physics major. But because the course was so difficult, it allowed him to discover that as smart as he was, he wasn't likely to be good enough to make, the, make an impact on the world as a theoretical physicist. So this led him to choose a different major. And if you ask me, I think his career turned out okay. And who knows, had the course been just a little bit easier, maybe he would have stuck with physics and there would never be an Amazon.com. Another thing the firing of Professor Jones tells us is that colleges today seem more afraid of offending and upsetting students. They seem more willing to accommodate their feelings and listen to their complaints. Now, one can argue that that's actually a good thing if you view college as sort of like a business and they're merely trying to please their customers who are often paying $70,000 or more per year to attend. But if you do this in academia, in my opinion, the end result is that you devalue the prestige of getting a degree from one of these colleges if you knew standards were lowered to please the students. And it reminds me of a joke I used to hear years ago about a certain private university located in Southern California where people joked, pay a fee, get a degree. And essentially, that's, what's happened, that's what happens when colleges begin to cave into demands to lower standards so more students can pass. Colleges should be hard because that's the only way students can find out how good they really are. When I look back, I definitely learned a lot more from the difficult classes I took in college where I got a B as opposed to the classes I took in high school where I got A's. But I do sometimes wonder though, how my career might have turned out had I gone to an easier college and got better grades. That said, I feel like the rigorous college experience I had still helps me today whenever I try to learn a new difficult and complex subject. Colleges should be hard because only by challenging yourself will you know how good you really are and be able to grow and get better. In closing, this is a time of year when high school seniors across the country are working on their college applications. And some of you out there will get into one of these elite colleges. And therefore, you will have the choice of attending an elite institution where you might not be one of the best versus attending a less competitive college where you could be one of the best. Now, there are actually advantages to both but it will be up to you to decide for yourself. However, if you do end up attending an elite institution like a Princeton or an MIT, don't get discouraged if you find it difficult and challenging. Remember that it's supposed to be challenging and you're there to compete with the very best. And this will better prepare you for life ahead. And regardless of your age and stage in life, I hope this video has been helpful as you learn other hard lessons in life. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.